Good evening class. So for today's lecture we're going to discuss Beowulf. We're going to discuss, discuss the history of Beowulf and what the meaning of this poem could be. Um, before we start, I have made up a list for you of different vocab that we're going to go through um, and names that we're going to th go through too. Um, I want you to use this paper with the vocab and the characters on it. I want you to use this as a study guide for our test. I want you to write down, jot down little notes for yourself. If you think that there's something important, I want you to write that down. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, first the history of Beowulf. This is an Anglo-Saxon poem. Do you know what an Anglo-Saxon poem is or what they are? An Anglo-Saxon poem would be around the Anglo-Saxon period mm -hmm. where people wrote a lot of epic poems. Yeah, correct. Anglo-Saxon Anglo Saxons were a group of people. They were Germanic people. They were kind of rough and tough, kind of what you would picture Vikings like. So as we read through Beowulf, keep that picture in your head, okay? Um, Anglo-Saxons wrote epic poems. Can you tell me what an epic poem is? It would be uh, pretty much a poem where somebody's boasting of, and making it epic and more imaginative to others. Mm -hmm. Okay, epic poem is on your vocab, so you might want to write that down. An epic poem is something that is a story written, it's a poem, in story form. And it tells the story of a life or is the story of an adventure. And Anglo-Saxons were notorious for their epic poems. And it, they tell great stories that normally you wouldn't listen here. Um, another vocab word that we're going to have to go through is boasting, mead hall, metaphors, kennings, and imagery. Now, can you tell me what boasting is? This is an easy one. Well, boasting would be bragging one's, oneself up. Yes. Boasting in epic poems, especially Anglo-Saxon poems, are very common. Um, pretty much every Anglo-Saxon poem you're going to read, there's going to be boasting, which is normal. That's totally fine in Anglo-Saxon poems. Do we boast a lot today? Some people do, but it's not looked good. Some on. people do, yes, but we, we shouldn't, should we? No. Um, the reason that Anglo-Saxons boast is because they like to talk about their accomplishments. It's a good thing to be a warrior and accomplished. So, as we read through Beowulf, there's going to be a lot of this. So don't be offended, don't be anything like that, just because that, that was their way of life. Now, what's a mead hall? A mead hall is a very important place. The mead hall in Beowulf is one of the main settings of the entire story. So can you tell me what a mead hall is? It'd be a gathering place where all types of people can go to gather and have meetings and talk and feasts mm -hmm. and drink mead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a perfect definition for a mead hall. Um, our setting of Beowulf is a huge part of it anyway is in a meat hall, and it was Horsgar's meat hall. So it's important to know that it's, it, meat halls were the center of the whole village. And it's a, in a very important place for a lot of people at this time. So that is why it takes place in the meat hall, one of his great battles that we will read. Another vocab word, we're going to just go through these two quickly, um, metaphors and imagery. What is that? What's, what's a metaphor and imagery? A uh, metaphor would be something else that can relate to something else that can be used as one or, one or the other, but it's a different word, but it means the same. Not exactly. A metaphor is, two, is, is a phrase where it uses comparisons. It's, it's comparing two items with the words like like or as. And so as you go through this, anytime you see like or as in a sentence, it's always going to be comparing one thing to another. So it's always going to be a metaphor. On your test, there's going to be, I'm going to pull out different metaphors that you're going to have to explain. So keep that in mind as we go through these. And when you find a metaphor that really sticks out to you, I would write that down on your study guide. Okay? Okay. Now what's imagery? What, what would you define imagery as? In writing form? Mm -hmm. Imagery would be trying to write a picture into somebody's mind the best way that you can write it. 
Exactly. You describe something. Exactly. So a new term that we're going to talk about is a kenning. We kind of talked about kennings before when we read a poem called The Seafarer and the Wanderer. Um, but not, not a whole lot. Can you tell me what a kenning is? It could be a phrase that means something else, but it's real different. Mm -hmm. It is two words put together. Always two words. Mm -hmm. Always two words put together, separated by a hyphen, that ha te like it's, they're two words that you wouldn't think would have a meaning of a different word. So mm. it's, it's like saying, it, saying light bringer, for an example. Light bringer, which. which would be a torch or a light. So that is what a kenning is. It's taking two words and mashing it together to make a completely different word of the two words that are put together. Anglo-Saxons were known for their kennings. So throughout this whole book, throughout this whole poem, we're always going to read kennings. Some of them are a little bit confusing, but if you have questions about it as we go through, because this is a hard poem, we're gonna we're not gonna get the the easy poem. We got the hard English poem. So as we go through this, if you have questions, just let me know, and we'll we'll stop and we will talk it out. So the history of Beowulf is pretty interesting. Um, a lot of historians believe that Beowulf was an accident. It wasn't supposed to be discovered. It wasn't supposed to survive all of these centuries. Um, and they also believe that it's neither a myth nor a folk tale, but it's a legendary history. What does that mean to you when I say that? When I say that this poem is a legendary history, what comes to your mind when I say that? Well, it could be something of legend, and some parts of it could be legible pieces of history. Exactly. When I say legendary history, I mean that this poem could or could not be true. It's a legend, but it also has a mixture of history within it. And I say this because the places that we will read about, the settings of this story, is, are real places. These are places that have been found. The names in this poem have been identified as real people. Um, historians and English professors are believing that Beowulf was written in the setting of Scandinavia. That is where it is based out of. And that makes sense, especially with the Anglo-Saxon people. Um, so, I mean, how, what do you think of that? Do you think that this story could be true? Do you think it could be true? Yeah, it could be. Could be? Well, I'm going to let you guys, you decide that as we read through this. Um, another thing that historians and critics alike also think is that Beowulf was written as a political statement. Um, and they think this because at the time that they're believing Beowulf was written, there was a feud going on between two different pe people who were considered Anglo-Saxon type people. And they were the Geats and the Swedes. Now, these people didn't like each other. There were wars, there were feuds, and it was a bloody mess. People don't know if maybe Beowulf was written on the Geats side or the Swedes side, but they think that maybe the monsters are metaphors for the political issues. So as we go through this and we we are introduced to the monsters, like Grendel could have been a Geat, or the dragon could have been a Sweet. It's up for you, to you to decide what you think. Could this be a political statement at this time? And because it's common, it's, it's very, very common for authors, even way back in this time, to talk about, to, to put in their writing of, different issues that are going on. They didn't want to just come out and say it abruptly, but they wanted to let people know, like, hey, this is how we feel, so we're going to write about it like this in an epic poem story. And we're going to encounter this when we read Spencer's Fairy Queen. So keep that also in mind as we progress through this whole course. Another way to look at Beowulf is this, and I think this is one of the most interesting is that a lot of critics think and believe that Beowulf could be a Christian poem. Now, they think this and they feel this way because they, they see Beowulf as a Christ-like figure. They see him as a Christ-like figure just because of his persona and how he feels about his people. He loves his people. He loves to help people. He is a warrior. He likes to be evil. It's a good versus evil 
thing, he, and he is able to sacrifice himself for his people. And that is why a lot of people believe that Beowulf could in fact be a Christian poem written in the Anglo-Saxon period. Now, why, why is it hard to believe that this poem that is so, that so many people believe is an Anglo-Saxon poem, why is it hard to believe that it could be a Christian poem? Because during that era, most of those people were heathens or pagans. Exactly. A lot of people at this time, Christianity wasn't quite developed yet. At the time that a lot of people believed this was written. Or if it was, it wasn't taking effect the way a lot of people thought it would. Um, the main religion at the time is paganism. So that is why there's still a lot of non-believers who think this isn't true, that Beowulf was written by an Anglo-Saxon, it's not a Christian poem, but it could in fact have been written by a monk in a monastery way, way sooner than we thought it ever was. Um, but that, that's what I want you to figure out, I, that's what I want you to decide. Do you think that this is a historical event? Do you think that this, the stories in this poem actually happened? Um, or do you think it's just a political get-up to bash another pe sorts of people? Or do you think this was written as a story of Christ? I want you to decide that um, as we go along. But this is what you need to think. keep in mind when you think of that and when you think of Beowulf, is that we don't know who the authors are. We don't know who wrote this, and we don't know the exact date either. And the earlier we think of Beowulf, the more believable this story actually is. So as we go through this, think about this poem as early as you can, like dawn of civilization, beginning of time, because it makes the story so much more believable and so much more enjoyable to read. We don't know at all the data was written? They, they have guesstimated, but it's hard to tell. Oh, sure. It, it was one of the first poems that was actually discovered. Um, that they re 